Here's the beginnings to my newest electricity project. It may not look like much now, but we'll see it in a minute. Wash machine. Here is the rotor and stator. Um, easy to get out here and start for the wind turbine. This process. is what the stator looks like once you get the uh, heavy magnet off there. I got my helper here helping me. This is what the two parts look like once they're out of the washing machine. Now you just got to decide how you want the hub and um, crankshaft, I guess, to be mounted. There's two options. You can use parts of the washing machine itself and cut it and fit it to what you need. Um, or you can make your own, but you have to usually have some kind of... Um, uh, lathe or mill to do that. The back side of the washing machine drum, the part that they call the spider bracket or spider brace, um, that's what actually hooks right onto that back uh, magnet that spins on the stator. Um, it might be worthwhile to keep that and use that to mount your blades. I'm not sure if it if I'm going to be using that yet or not, but it's a good idea. It's in the center out of this. Hopefully it just busts the aluminum and drops that right did not work. Saw it into it a little bit. Maybe that'll help break it. Pressing did not work. Um, not sure how that aluminum and steel is bonded together in here. But I ended up just sawing it off flat here with the bandsaw. And then I'll chuck this in the lathe and true it up and get ready for the blade hub. Hub is machined. Complete with a... Uh, spring clip there to hold the bearings in place now off to the other the side the completed bearing spindle here complete with a little thrust adapter guess i could have eliminated that thrust adapter if i would have uh made the inside part a little further but you know hindsight's 2020. hub is machined and ready for the bolt holes that will mount onto the stage originally planned on using the circle that i marked on the lathe to find the spots for the holes to mount but i thought it might just be easier to do it in cad since it already makes sure that the measurements are perfect and everything and i'll use that as a template using this template i just used my punch here to mark the center of each one of those holes. There's a little bit of deflection here in the paper, but it's within a thousandth, I believe. So it should be pretty good accurate. Finished cutout of the inside piece from the CNC. Got the coils wired up here. I think I have them wired a little too high a voltage right now. I think I might change the configuration to make a higher amperage at lower voltage. But right now you can see here is this a test i got a test light there and then i'm running this 12 volt fog light here and you can see me just gonna moving back and forth and it's starting to produce current so just moving it back and forth here i'm able to get about two amps out of it i went ahead and labeled each one of these coils starting right here where the coils split. This is all the way wired in series around to here. And you can see that point right there is where it ends. So I went and labeled them one, two, three, one, two, three. And the configuration that I am gonna go with is six sets, so of three. So one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. So it divides it in half. So there's eight, 18 coils on each half and we're gonna do two halves right here in parallel. So I'll show you a little bit how we had and counted out here and marked right where the 18th coil is. So this is where the last one goes through and it starts with the new one right there. So you'll have to go through and cut them. So you'll cut between this one and that one, and that's that wire there to there. And then again from here, to there, you cut the wire and split it. So you'll have six wires total. You'll have to tie three of them together and I'll show you in a minute. And the other 
three are going to be the input for the second series of coils. To get solder to stick, you're going to have to sand them down very lightly with some emery cloth, just like I did here. You'll have to do that to each one of them, then you can pre-tin them and add the wires. Part here for the mast, this is I believe called the yaw bearing. It's to allow the turbine to move with the wind on the mast. And then of course the wiring will go through there through the slip ring. And then this piece here will be mounted for the furling tail. Um, so this will be towards the end of the turbine and then the tail will mount and, and allow it to, to furl sideways. Starting to look a little more like a turbine here. It's got to make the fiberglass surround for it and of course the blades. Hub is made here. It'll be mounted there. Direct bolt pattern for the blades. Furling tail is done. 20 pound spring articulates sideways to draw the blades out of the, the way of the high winds. And yaw bearings done here. Just got to mount that on the pole, which goes right there, and everything's pretty pretty well organized now. Here's the mock-up of the electronic brake system um, for the wind turbine. You can see the rotor spinning here. This will apply the brake. It's got little brake pads in there. Uses this large servo motor here to apply pressure on there and it doesn't take much to stop it not sure how it's going to work yet in the winter since there is some grease in here but uh should help stop if i need to my beer box slash cardboard cereal box template here and then we'll just add fiberglass cloth on there and start making a two-piece removable housing for it. It's kind of a airfoil type shape. It's hard to tell on the phone here, but it's one of the biggest tricks that I found for making a wind turbine for green energy is covering it with green fiberglass. My brake controller here, as you can see, it has a couple different features, but as I spin the rotor, it will pick up on the RPM reading and automatically stop it. So you can see it hit over 200 and applied the brake. Does it automatically at my set point or I can manually trigger it if I want to, but it just waits till it reaches that point. Applies the brake. For the blades here, I took some uh, one by six pieces of pine, um, cut them in four foot lengths, measured five inches from the end, and then two inches from this end, and I made a line. That's gonna be where the, the blade edge gets cut. Um, on this side here, I made a five degree angle on the inside of the blade here, so that'll give us the tilt. And then I would take and cut these angle pieces off of there, so like you see here, and then we're gonna glue them onto the top to make the three quarter inch end straight. All blades were hand planed, so they're all equal height. And trued up here. So now I'm gonna start cutting the other angles. Got the blades cut, just the taper anyway. They all line on the, up on the hub pretty well. Just need to do some final sanding and reshaping here, and then we can uh, see what they do. Router the edge here tapered the back now I just got to make this taper go to the line here to help the airfoil shape it's kind of the airfoil shape here it starts narrow and gets wider as it goes to there
few things that I learned throughout this process that I will probably um, change or have changed. Uh, the first thing, I ended up buying fiberglass blades for it. The wooden blades did not perform as well as I'd hoped that they would. Um, buying fiberglass blades sure did uh, make up the difference and they work really, really good at a fair price. Uh, second thing is I originally built just a rectifier controller for like a uh, diversion style um, con turbine controller and that was not very efficient so I ended up getting a different controller with a buck slash boost um, internal circuit uh, that way when the turbine is making less than the battery voltage it will boost the voltage to start charging the battery. Um, and the last thing is the, the hub on here. Um, the ceramic magnets work all right for lower energy, but I will be upgrading mine to um, some rare earth magnets to get some more current, hopefully, out of it. Um, other than that, I hope you enjoyed my, my project here. Um, it sure was fun, and I will post the improvements as I make them.